eczema, psoriasis, are these the same? Are they different? They could be twins, but they're not. Today we're going to go over how to figure out one from the other and help you decipher which condition you have. So there are a few telltale signs to tell the difference when you're looking at psoriasis versus eczema. First, let's take a look at psoriasis. Psoriasis is usually pretty thick because it is due to a buildup of overproducing of skin cells. So you have this thick skin cell that is building up and it's causing either a papule, a plaque, or a patch. And it's gonna be usually red in color and once you have that patch or that plaque on your skin, it produces some scale. And the scale is usually layers of um, either silvery scale, it could be white or red, but that's pretty typical of how psoriasis will present. And it will also be very well defined. The borders will be nice and circular. They won't be out of line. So that's one thing to look for. Also, with psoriasis, it usually occurs on the tops of the knees, on the elbows, and it could also be in the scalp, sometimes in the nails, and sometimes other parts of the body. With eczema, you actually see it like on the reverse area. So whereas in psoriasis, you're gonna get it on the elbow, with eczema, you're actually gonna get it inside your arm. So in this, it's called the anticubital fossa. So eczema, psoriasis, that's pretty common. Also, if you're looking at your knees, which you can't see right now, usually psoriasis is going to be on the tops of the knees and you'll find eczema behind your knees. So this is just to give you an idea of the variability that you'll tell between one versus the other. So now you get what psoriasis looks like. Let's talk about what eczema looks like. As I mentioned, skin folds. Look between the arm fold, behind the knees, behind your neck fold, your chest, your ankles, your wrist, and very often on your face. Typical locations where you can find eczema. So in terms of how eczema looks, you kind of first have to look at the skin color you're dealing with. If you're pale, then your eczema is usually gonna appear like a red patch or plaque. It's gonna have some dryness to it and flakiness to it. The, the scale won't be as silvery looking as it is in psoriasis. And if you have darker skin tones, usually eczema can appear very leathery looking, um, kind of grayish in tone, also will have that scale to it. And usually it has a crust or an oozing to it, but that's not always in every case, obviously. It's also typically itchier than the lesions are in psoriasis. So why do we get these rashes? We know with psoriasis, it's due to the immune system over replicating the skin cells that's causing thick, scaly, dry plaques. With eczema, we don't know the exact cause, but we know that there are a few factors. One is genetics plays a role, so it's very typical for eczema to run in families, just like psoriasis. We know the immune system has some role in it as well. And we know that in a lot of eczema patients, they have a gene mutation with filaggrin. Filaggrin is very important for the skin barrier. So if this gene is messed up, it causes an impaired skin barrier and can cause inflammation, irritation, and can cause your skin to act weird when it's exposed to different irritants and soaps, detergents, fragrances. And that's why with eczema, and we'll get into this more, we always tell patients avoid fragrances, use um, soaps and conditioners, lotions, moisturizers that are fragrance free because one of the things that might be triggering their eczema or flaring it is that fragrance because they are missing that um, or they have a mutation in that gene that is not allowing their skin barrier to react appropriately. Eczema is a lot more common than psoriasis. We know that one of the most common types of eczema, because eczema can break down, you can have hand eczema, which is called dyshydrotic eczema, and I can talk about that in another video. The most common type of eczema is called atopic dermatitis, which mostly affects children and babies. And then with psoriasis, the most common type of psoriasis is called plaque psoriasis. And we know with both of these conditions, like many things in life, emotional stress can play a role. In terms of triggers, we know that with psoriasis, a recent strep throat infection can actually cause a flare in psoriasis. It's called guttate psoriasis. So very common in children to see that. 
And then this is going to sound so weird and strange, but a recent skin injury, like a bad scrape or abrasion on your arm or leg, wherever it was, or recent rubbing and friction in that area can also trigger psoriasis, in addition to some medications like lithium and blood pressure medicines. What flares your eczema? Overheating, oversweating, long hot showers, not good for your skin. I know, sorry to disappoint you. Wool, cold wintry months. I know, we all hate those, at least I do. Fragrances, stay away from fragrances, long baths, all of these things I mentioned are just not good for your eczema and they're gonna flare it. Both of these rashes can be itchy. However, eczema is far itchier. Actually, eczema can be triggered by the itch scratch cycle. So you may feel something on your skin that feels itchy and it triggers something in your brain to start itching it and then scratching it and then itching it. And then it can actually cause inflammatory mediators to come into that area and cause an eczema flare. So. If you think about eczema, just put it in the itchy category. And it could be so itchy that it can actually keep babies and children up at night and disrupt their sleep. In terms of psoriasis, it's usually more of a burning, stinging sensation and sometimes can be mildly itchy. By the way, I just want you to let you know that you can have psoriasis and eczema at the same time. It's not that common, but it is possible. At this point in time, we have no definitive cure for eczema or psoriasis. However, we do have very effective treatment options and we treat them both very similarly. We have topical steroids that work really well. We have oral medication, photo light therapy, and even biologics. I hope you found this video helpful. I really wanted to help decipher the difference between these two rashes because it can be very confusing. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll see you soon.